Hey, Plinkin. Plinkin, where are you going? Why, why you gotta leave as soon as I turn the camera on? Every single... And there goes the other cat. Everyone's so camera shy today. That's fine. Whatever. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. It's been a minute since we've done just like a vlog or gone around and looked at plants and there wasn't even an October garden tour. Not much changed. There wasn't a lot to talk about in the garden. So I thought I would go ahead and do like an October, November sort of like a hybrid. Here's what's been going on in the garden sort of tour. <laughs> and to start things off, I guess I need to go back to something I said in the last tour. In October, that's my transition time. I start pulling the pottery apart getting rid of the annuals, getting the plants cleaned up and ready to take back inside. So the October tour looks more like a gardening bomb went on outside because it's just kind of a lot of just chaos and projects everywhere. I wasn't lying. <laughs> Things are pretty messy out here. Maybe not so much mess as much as just like the plants are dying. Going dormant, I should say. We had a really good hard freeze not too long ago. I pretty much took care of the bananas and all the other tender perennials that are out here. Back in October, we were having a few random cold snaps and I was just tossing some frost claws over the tops of everything, which is fine, worked okay. But that was when it was getting down to like 34, 31 at nighttime. I was confident that the ground was still warm enough to keep things safe, but it got down to 28 and that's that's kind of beyond frost cloth for a lot of the tropicals. So as you can see, uh, tender perennials, that they're going to sleep now. They're done for the year. So now it's that fun time of year to come out with the snippers and get things cut back get them cut down to the ground. I'll start getting some mulch on top of things here fairly soon. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks, maybe. I don't know. This is bugging me though. This is too messy. I gotta cut this back. Here's a drastic improvement, or maybe not so much. This is an area that's gonna get a whole bunch of mulch into it. The Chinese fan palms, they didn't skip a beat. 28 degrees barely touched them. The cordelins that are back there are going to defoliate. They should still be okay. Just have to dig them up and get them inside. All of the purple heart plants are fine. I guess fine is not quite right. They're a little bit raggedy, but considering it got down to 28, not too bad. Did have a frost cloth over the spot though. Wasn't enough to save the impatience, but the purple heart plants and the lemon coral sedums, they're looking fine. The bananas, well, I mean, you know, they look pretty terrible. That's to be expected though, right? I mean, 28 degrees, that's not, not gonna bode well for the banana trees. However, since it got down to 28 degrees, it's been absolutely beautiful outside. It's been in the mid 70s, like pushing 80 most days. It's been an extremely, extremely warm November. There is new growth pushing out from inside of them, which I wasn't expecting to happen. That's a nice surprise, really. It doesn't matter. I don't think there's going to be enough growing time left this year to get much out of them. Otherwise, I would have gone ahead and cleaned off all that dead foliage. And if they had like three weeks to recover, something like that, then I would have expected more you know, push out probably a leaf every, I don't know, 10 days or so when temperatures are kind of mild. It's just unlikely that there's going to be enough time left in November for these to really put out anything new that's going to make them look nice. So I just left it. It's also a lot easier to get the banana leaves to dry if you leave them hanging up. When you lay them down on the ground, they tend to turn into more of a mush and I would like to get them to more of a dry papery texture because sometimes I like to shred them and use them in the mulch piles to protect the trunks during the winter time. And that's not something that I always do, but this year I think I will just because I'm not really going to be able to handle as many bags of mulch as I used to. This will just be something that helps provide a little bit more insulation without having to buy quite as much mulch. Maybe it's going to be a mild winter. I have no idea. This has been a weird year already. I mean, in so many ways, not just the weather, right? The area over here that was think I was calling the ginger garden. It looks pretty terrible. This looks like crap. But that'll look better once I get in here and get the dead impatience cut out. Get all these gingers cut down to the ground, some fresh mulch and freshen it up somewhat. And then when I don't, I don't need to have broken pool poles laying around in there either. That's not a great look. Temperatures start to cool off a lot. And I mean like probably 15 degrees Fahrenheit and below. I'll be putting frost blankets on top of the sable miners. These are, they're called a scrub palm, the sable miner. They don't normally trunk. They just get great big fan leaves on them and they are extremely cold hardy. Here in zone 6B, where temperatures might get to be between 0 and 5, maybe down to negative 5. 
just depends on the winter. They do okay, even unprotected, but this is their first year in the ground, so I don't expect them to have very much hardiness to them. So just to be safe, just to get them through their first winter safely, I'll probably put some Christmas lights around them and pull them a little bit tight and make sure they're mulched heavily around the base and then put a frost cloth on top of them. It's a lot of protection for a sable palm. It's probably overkill, but they're not that easy to find. At least this far north, they're not very easy to find. So if they were to die, it'd be really hard to replace them. And generally for the first three to five years that I have any type of hardy, I should say hardy palm in the ground, I like to be really thorough with how I protect them their first year. And then I slowly dial it back over the years. But just to get things going, I like to keep them extra, extra safe extra protected got a bucket full of leaves here and a pool full of leaves right behind me it looks pretty doesn't it toby doesn't that look pretty doesn't that look oh okay there's also a rotten pumpkin need to do something with that all of those beautiful bikini teeny colocasias they're looking pretty horrible that's to be expected all their growth that's down low closer to the ground is more firm more sturdy and alive. The majority of the foliage, as you can see, everything that was sticking up high and kind of hanging over the patio was more exposed to the air, to the cold. They're done, which is fine. They're tough, they're hardy. They'll be back next year. And even though it got really, really cold that one night, it was just one night. That's That was the thing. It was just one night, and then it's been absolutely beautiful and unseasonably warm ever since. But they're still putting out new growth. So in a few days, I'm going to come through here and get everything cleaned up. All the dead growth cleared out of here. Same thing with the impatience that are over there. I'll try and tidy the bananas if they're dry enough to get the leaves off of them. I don't have a ton of evergreens, so it's not like this is going to be a beautiful winter garden. That's not ever really the case here. Pretty much in the wintertime, it's just flat brown mulch mulch piles i'm trying to incorporate more evergreens into the garden the sable miners they'll be uncovered the majority of the winter i only put those frost claws on them like i said when temperatures get really cold so be a little bit of interest there there's also a couple of needle palms in the very back they're kind of hidden behind the dead and patients that are over there those will get a little bit taller though they grow more slowly but someday those will have more of a deep green glossy foliage that will be up against the house with more of this somewhat glaucous doesn't look very glaucous on camera but in person it's kind of a silvery green ish something like that so be some contrast there varying foliage types and shades and next year i plan on getting some more evergreens in here just because i hate looking at just the dead barren garden all winter it's so ugly which of course is one of the things that i love about the laurel hedge the skip laurels they add so much winter interest so i do think they're a little bit confused right now like i've said over and over again last two weeks of october were pretty frigid and wet and just gross maybe even the last two and a half weeks of october and it's starting to warm up and they're a little bit confused i don't recall these when we pushing out new growth right before winter rolls in at least they didn't last year but that was their first year in the ground i had planted plenty of laurels before in the past and haven't noticed that to happen it's okay it's not something i'm concerned about as long as things cool back off and move into more fall and winter like temperatures in a gradual pace which they should that's what the forecast looks like is going to happen they'll be okay I mean, they should be fine either way they're skip laurels they're pretty tough plants the mule palms they are great these are they don't 28 degrees they're fine they don't skip a beat super tough cold hardy palms which is one of the many reasons that i like them they have a nice big girthy trunk on them they get the little boots lots of texture on the inside though right now it's full of oak leaves yeah, i don't normally move these palms and the mule palms until it's dropping into the teens something like that dune grass is standing out and looking nice even though it's like piled up a bunch a bunch of dead stuff that's okay i don't know what happened here apparently at some point this banana tree got cut and chopped i didn't do it at least not that i rem i don't remember to it I, why would i don't what happened here i've had people out here helping new things so it's, I don't, maybe somebody just decided they wanted to cut the top off of that one truck I, I don't know doesn't really matter growing time's over for the bananas there's more gingers over here that need to be cut back the banana cannas you can kind of see where they topped off and then met their doom so these all need to be cut back with the cannas i usually cut them to being like maybe like a four inch stub just a little nub sticking up above the ground and then i mulch them very very heavily both of the clumps that i showed you this one and the one that was over there they're pretty close to the pavement to the driveway so that actually should help keep their roots a little bit warmer during the winter time but even still just to be safe 
they'll get cut back and get a whole bunch of mulch on them. The alocasias and colocasias, they're no more, no more. They're going. All of these that go around this trunk right here, those are going to get cut back a little bit further and then more mulch. Lots and lots, lots of mulch on top of them. They normally are winter hardy here. If we have a really bad winter, it's not always guaranteed that they'll survive, but they normally do. And if they don't, I got these in bags from Sam's Club. They were like four bulbs per bag and I think they were five dollars so they're easy to replace if we have a really bad winter but again i don't really think that's going to be an issue i'm also really not even planning on keeping these in the ground here next year i just kind of stuffed these in here or had other people stuff them in here for me because they needed to be planted but where i wanted them to be planted it was going to be a really big project to summarize though along the area of this back wall here where there is enough sun i wanted to have a whole wall of the banana not the bananas of the elephant ears a whole wall of the elephant ears coming up over the wall planted up high that provide a nice green wall look really tropical low maintenance just drop a drip head on each one of them but that'll have to wait for next year hey tobes how you doing bud you want to say hi no okay the only palms i have left out here are the queen palms there's two of them out here one night of cold that's fine they're okay they can handle it one night of cold really didn't affect them sometimes it takes several days or even several weeks depending on the plant for cold damage to show itself on the plants it's been about a week and a half since that cold snap so i'd be seeing any damage on these by now and even if it, these could completely defoliate and with enough fungicide and enough tlc they'd shoot out new growth and look totally fine with it a few months to a degree right i mean if it were to be like 10 degrees outside well that would probably kill them and realistically to get this into my growth space i'm gonna have to do some pruning anyways because this thing it grew a lot this year why is the lighting so bad you get it it's really big so the queen palms are still out those sable miners i showed you before the needle palms those are in the ground they're tough plants the mule palms they'll be fine for several more weeks probably and the windmill palms i'm out here in the back and then i'm in the front yard i think the last video i posted or the video prior to that i planted some kales and cabbages around the base of those smaller windmill palms the ones i have back here are much bigger and much older oh and look at this this looks different from last time you guys were back here doesn't it yeah there's a lot of cleaning to do and yes there are some dead plants i didn't take everything inside i've been in kind of a purging mentality the last few months and i've gotten to a point where any plants if i'm not like really attached to them I was like, they can go. Normally, if I get sick of a plant, I, of course, try to give it away. But with COVID and everything going on, that's more difficult. And then uh, there's also toxicity issues so like my Ficus larata, the fiddly fig. That's the plant that I have, but I just... I just don't care about it. And I've had it for years and I don't really know why. <laughs> it takes up space. It's not particularly hard to take care of. Like, it's one of those plants that I've noticed, if you just kind of leave it be it does its own thing when it gets babied that seems to be when there's problems but it just doesn't bring me joy so i let my fiddly fig go also and that was an example of a plant where it's like i didn't know anybody who i could just give it to so it's sad that's a little bit wasteful not super proud of that but it's just those were the circumstances i contacted friends and wanted to see if anybody wanted it but they didn't circumstances where some people just can't take plants so they have to be non-toxic kind of simple to grow and again covid so like a bit really avoiding other humans as much as possible if you don't know these had bird of paradise in them which were a lot of fun to get on potted i just sit on top of that pot while someone else was pulling it with the anyways they all had these cordal and fredicuses behind them there's only the one or two that got left out i did move the other ones in so it's not like i just was like i'm letting all of my plants die it was only a few things i like this macho fern back here i don't it's they're so big i don't have anywhere to put that i'm going to go ahead and give it a cut back and take it in and let it start over so it won't be quite as big and quite as bulky this other macho fern over here you can tell this is obviously a much warmer spot remember when i was talking about microclimates this is a really good time to observe where those microclimates are as you can see this is maybe i don't know maybe 12 feet apart something like that and it's much colder right here than over here this one over here this macho fern barely skipped it well i shouldn't say that it has damage on it but you can see one of these things looks much better than the other right which isn't news i already knew that this is where i tend to put a lot of my windmill palms during the winter time i am going to be cleaning this whole area up i'm not just it's not just going to stay like this this is just because there are a lot of other things going on that you'll see in the next video but i am going to try and do something out here nothing elaborate but just something so that there's a nice welcoming place to sit outside during the winter time because again with the pandemic any socialization has to happen outside just to be safe so i'll probably get these two plants potted up with well whatever evergreens i can find in clearance i want it to be cheap sorts of evergreens in these two and then i have the 
magnolia planter that I did on the channel back in the springtime. That's going to go in the middle, right in between these, and then other shrubs. I'll have the windmill palms over here, so it's just going to be like a little corner that looks nicer. <laughs> it's, it's not, that's a low bar right now. It's not going to take much to kind of spruce this spot up. I'll underplant them with kills and cabbages and try and make it look as nice as I can but it's not something I want to spend a lot of time or money on because the winters like I, I don't know how it's going to be if it's absolutely frigid then there will be no hanging out in the backyard that that's not going to happen usually the winters here where I live in St. Louis it's pretty cold late December through like late February there have been winters where it stayed below freezing below 32 Fahrenheit for like six to eight weeks and never got any warmer but usually there's a few days mixed in there where it'll be in the 50s and just be absolutely beautiful and pleasant. There's usually little breaks every few weeks. I mean, I want things to look nice out here, period. I don't just want to leave trash everywhere. <laughs> it's not a great look. But for the sake of being able to safely socialize and just have something nice to look at, I want to get this cleaned up. So it'll be happening in a vlog here in, I don't know, maybe two weeks? Something like that. The kales and cabbages and things that were in some of these fall planters are doing just wonderfully, but you can see the things that are behind them, they're not looking too hot. And that's normal, that's what's to be expected. This pumpkin planter here, the pansies, they're fine. The mum in the back, that's done. Same thing with this other fall planter. Let's see the alyssum, that's done, but the creeping jenny looks like it's okay. The kales that are in here, they're going to be fine. And the mum in this one still has some color in it, but not much. These are about ready for a cutback. But the euphorbia in the back is looking fine. So even once I cut that mum out of here, this one should still look pretty nice. I had thought about pulling this mum and planting one of those euphorbias in here, but I don't really want a pumpkin planter out here all year. That's sort of a seasonal thing, so I will more than likely pull the pansies out and do something else with those. I think that would make a lot more sense. Wagon planter, everything that I expected to die when it got below freezing, it did. It did what it's supposed to. It died. But again, the more hardy things, which is really just kale and cabbage, they're good. They're looking fine. There was one really big oopsie when moving the plants in. I forgot about these succulents over here, but I got lucky and they're okay, which I'm shocked by, but it was a dry cold and the soil is fairly dry in here. Uh, I was really expecting this aeonium to bite the dust at 28 degrees. I remembered the next morning that I had forgotten to bring the succulent planter in. It's not like a beautiful succulent planter, like not at all. It's pretty hideous. But this aeonium that's in here grew so incredibly well this year that it would be a shame to lose it to just like one really cold night. I got really, really lucky there, especially considering this is an elevated spot, so I wouldn't expect it to stay as warm, but it was probably somewhat sheltered being back here by the house. Aeoniums and echeverias, depending on the types, they actually can be fairly cold hardy, not cold hardy to where I live, but a lot of them can be grown in zone 8, and zone 8 can drop into the upper 20s. It happens, so it makes sense that they survived. And like I said though, I just wasn't expecting it. That was a pleasant surprise. Needle palms are looking good. I don't protect these two needle palms here until temperatures get to like, I don't know, five degrees to zero. And even then I don't really need to. It's just to preserve the foliage because they're very slow growing. So if there is a lot of winter damage, then it takes them like a year to rebound and look nice again, sometimes even two years. 28 degrees, so I didn't have to worry about those at all. Uh, Kubas looking good. They are a little bit thirsty. We're supposed to get some rain today. It has been bone dry here these last 10 days. I've been watering a lot more than normal, more than I even have to in the summer because the air is more dry. The humidity drops down to being like 40 to 50% somewhere in there. Even though it's only like 70 something degrees, outside the plants are way 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 more thirsty than they are during the summer all that moisture just gets blown right out of the leaves late fall through winter here is usually pretty windy and dry we get some snow here and there but the air itself is normally just bone dry we'll chap your lips in a few minutes that cold came out of nowhere so some of the plants that normally have some kind of nice foliage like this natchez grape myrtle here that didn't it didn't really get to put on a show because it just it didn't see it coming poor thing it's okay though the plant's all right that's all that matters yeah i could walk around and talk about the garden bed for a ridiculously long time but i think you get the point it got cold and now that everything just looks terrible which is fine that's just part of it that's part of fall the majority of all the tropicals and semi-tropicals have been moved inside and that was a process. Yeah. Almost everything that was out here all summer long, now that's all in here, all in the garage. And there'll be a video on everything that was going on the last few weeks in regards to the plant moving, setting up the growth space. That video will be out after this one. 
It'll be on Saturday. I'm looking forward to getting the garden beds cleaned up, doing some winter planters, getting a little bit more interest out here and just overall having the space look nice again because it's really, it's pretty gross out here. And I already have a pretty decent selection of plants to play with, so I'm not going to have to look too hard for other things to throw in the mix for those winter planters. What's going on in your gardens? Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. It's been a minute since I've shown the backyard. It's been like, I don't know, maybe three weeks. I've been hiding it. And now, well, you can see what, here's what's been going on. Been moving plants in and just having the fall things happen. All right, as you can see, I've got a lot of work to do. Gonna wrap this up. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. I usually try and zoom in on something beautiful for that. I don't think this quite qualifies for. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.